Uh, thank you very much, Senator Mullen. Senator Bud, please. Thank you, Chairman and General Director. Thank you both for being here uh, and for your service as well. Uh, I'd like to focus on the Indo-PACOM um, AOR for just a little bit. Um, D Director Haynes, in this year's annual threat assessment, it states expanded military postures by both India and China uh, along their disputed border elevates the risk of armed confrontation between two nuclear powers. What do you assess as the risk of India and China's border dispute erupting into a conflict? Uh, it's not insignificant, and this is on the line of actual control between the um, Indian and the Chinese border, as you indicate. China has been uh, building up its infrastructure along the border and continuing to increase their presence, and we've seen uh, er eruptions at different times, but um, we've obviously been working with India in order to try to ensure that we're supporting them in their efforts to manage this. Thank you. Uh, General, the, um, the buildup that the director just referred to uh, along the line of actual control, what assistance, if any, is DIA providing to our Indian partners? We have, uh, through uh, uh, U.S. Indo-PACOM uh, joint intelligence team there, have reached out to our Indian partners. We have a, we have a relationship with them, and uh, we're, we're attempting to support their needs. Thank you. Um, director, just last week, the Chinese accosted a uh, Philippine Coast Guard ship, as many of us are aware of. Um, it appears that these are becoming more and more frequent. Um, so are these negligent or intentional encounters? And what's the, I, the IC's assessment of the purpose of China doing this? Yeah, we actually have some very good products on this that if you're interested, we should get to you. But this is um, if you would, please. what we've seen with China is they have expanded significantly their Coast Guard over the last many years. They have also... Um, uh, begun to use their Coast Guard in new ways. So in other words, they've passed laws that allow them to use their Coast Guard uh, to um, police, in effect, what they perceive as being their rightful uh, waters and, uh, and to uh, use even force under certain circumstances. And, um, and so, no, I do see this as part of a larger comprehensive uh, effort that they've engaged in. And it is, uh, there's sort of three different pieces to it. There's the uh, ships that they use that are part of militia that are not actually part of the Coast Guard or the PLA. And then there's the Coast Guard and then there's the PLA. And the relationship that they have with each of these different um, uh, sort of um, forces uh, is related and uh, sometimes intersects. Thank you. Uh, and a question for both of you, if you would, and uh, Director, we'll start with you. What's your assessment of the Chinese military's ability to conduct a cross-strait amphibious assault of Taiwan? And, um, you know, they now effectively practiced a blockade, but are they ready for uh, a major amphibious landing? And Director first. Senator, we can... We can uh uh, well, director first, and then if you're referring us to the closed session, if there's anything you can share in this setting, please do. Yeah, I would honestly defer to uh, General Barrier on the um, on their capacity, and probably would do it in a closed session. Understood, director. Any comments on that? I would. I would just say um, a very, very complicated uh, military operation. Uh, we've we've observed exercises where they uh, they review. Uh, the, the points on, on an operation like this, and we can provide more detail in a closed session. Uh, thank you. And uh, one final question for you, General. So DIA's mil China Military Power Report came out in 2019, so it's four years old now. If a new version was published today, what would the top line changes be? How has the military balance of power changed in Asia over the last four years? I think we'd, we'd probably start uh, describing the advances that they've made in every domain of their military capability in the short four years. Um, they've really advanced some of those capabilities. We talk about space, we talk about their, their new expanded nuclear capacity, and we'd probably also talk about uh, their expanded reach throughout the Indo-Pacific and some of those things that we were talking about before with like the maritime uh, fishing police and the Coast Guard and those, those actions. Thank you both again for your time and for your service, Chairman.